Welcome Karen Bourne, principal of the John Elliott School, and Mr. Andy Garlick, uh, the new principal at Broadmeadow. Uh, before we begin, Andy, can you share with Karen and me how your first year is going at Broadmeadow so far? I think it's going well. You know, we're, we're having a very exciting and fun-filled year over at Broadmeadow. This is a great opportunity right now to think about, with the new principal, what are we excited to bring back to Broadmeadow? What are we excited to try new? So every day I show up and it's, it's fun, people are engaged, there's a community that really cares about the students and the teachers of Broadmeadow, so it's a, it's a good year. Yeah, well I know that uh, the first year as principal, there's a, there's a lot going on and, and that's certainly true in this year. Uh, and uh, I know from hearing from families and from staff that they're very happy that uh, you're there. So, well, Karen and Andy, uh, we learned recently that uh, pretty soon that the mask requirement in schools in Massachusetts is ending. And here in Needham, we've decided that we will drop the mask requirement on Monday, March 7th, and create a mask-friendly environment for our students. Uh, folks have asked me, so what do we mean by a mask-friendly environment? I mean, what's that going to look like at Elliott? Thank you for asking. Um, we have had a lot of discussion um, with the principals, um, our guidance counselors, our teacher leaders to talk about how we're going to help our students through this big transition. Um, we've had to wear masks for almost two years now, and this is going to be a big adjustment. Some of our kids have never had an opportunity or have never been in an environment at school without a mask. Mm -hmm. So there are going to be a lot of feelings, um, and same thing with our staff. So uh, what we've done is, um, as we do with any transition, we come up with a, a lesson for the students to just be very truthful and transparent about what we're going to be doing. Uh, with our kids. So um, next, or the week after, after February vacation, we plan to show, um, have an all-school assembly, and just have a presentation about what a mask-friendly environment is going to look like for our kiddos, and what kind of expectations we have for our students and our staff um, in this particular slideshow. Um, and so I think the most important thing is for kids to understand that there is a choice to be made. And the choice is that you get, you can keep your mask on because that's what you're comfortable doing, or you can take your mask off. We ask kids to have a conversation with their families about what the best choice is for them. I know in my home, I have two sons that are going to be in a mask-friendly environment soon, and we've already started to have a conversation about what that first day of school is going to look like. Um, and then once a choice is made, we have to be respectful of others' choices. So that's really the most important thing. So spending, spending time talking to students and teachers about creating the conditions. The conditions are already very good at Broadmeadow mm -hmm. and Elliott and all of our schools to mm -hmm. support students and their choices and who they are. But this is an additional layer of work that we want to do before we become mass friendly. What does mass friendly look like at Broadmeadow? So very similar to what Karen talked about, one thing that is really on the minds of the faculty and the students at Broadmeadow too is what does this look like you know, when we change rules in elementary schools and we change that predictability, that can be something that causes anxiety because kids like that predictability. They so like the routine of what's happening. Yeah, here. they like to know what teachers are expecting of them and, and how to meet those expectations. So we're talking a lot about, you know, this is a change in the same way that we might change to indoor recess. You know, we're using the best information we have about keeping people safe, and this allows us right now to take our masks off. So we're going with that. Um, the second thing that I think we're thinking a lot about is, you know, People will choose whether they wear a mask or they don't wear a mask, but they're likely to make that decision many times a day or on different days. So we ha might have some students that someday choose to wear a mask and on another day choose not to, and that's okay, um, and supporting that decision. So we, you know, that it's absolutely true that we, we are good at routines, and so changing the routine always causes a little bit of, uh, you know, just maybe a little bit of a... Uh, um, a tick up in, in anxiety, but we'll get there. And, and we have great staff in place and, of course, wonderful students who will help make this happen. Talk about, uh, I, I, as we move into this, uh, this new learning environment of Mass Friendly, we will still require masks in health offices when mm -hmm. a student goes to see the nurse. We will still require masks on school transportation. Um, talk about lunchtime. Mm -hmm. um, 
in, in both at Elliott and Broadmeadow, you have optimized space between students as much as you possibly can, mm -hmm. but now we're going to uh, change up. What, what will happen at, uh, at Elliott? So um, we, we have had, we were very, very fortunate that we had space to optimize in the first place. We know that that wasn't available everywhere. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to be returning to our regular lunch tables the week after February vacation um, and just get kids used to sitting, you know, within a couple of feet of each other at lunch. Um, so that's the first thing. And then, um, and then about, you know, a week later, we'll go into a mask friendly environment. So that's going to be a good transition for us. Um, we are in conversations with our guidance counselors to figure out what a seating chart is going to look like. So every child, just like they are right now, they're going to have a, a designated seat that they that that we're going to be using. They need to stay there all for the rest of the year, um, so that we can keep track of where kids are sitting. Um, and of course, if we have families that are uncomfortable with seating, we can figure some kind of. Um, we can figure something out to help make sure that everybody's comfortable with the with the lunch situation. And of course, that means also a kind of a change in routine at lunchtime, so you have to work with students around that. Mm -hmm. What's that going to look like at Broadmeadow? Yeah, so the first thing I'll say is we'll be on March 7th. We'll, we, we'll use the week before to make sure that we're setting kids up for success. You know, Dan, one of the things I'm really grateful during this time is people talking about social-emotional health. And I think one of the experiences that's really important for child development, especially in an elementary school, is a chance to be with their peers and to just be kids. Mm -hmm. And the lunchtime actually provides that opportunity. So we're very thoughtful about doing this well for the students. And we really value having a chance to have kids just be kids. And at lunch is a great opportunity for that. Well, absolutely. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded really that it isn't so much of a change at lunchtime in our cafeterias. Right now, in actually most of our schools, students are seated right next to each other during lunchtime, and we've been able to successfully and in a safe way manage that. Kids are out at recess, and, and uh, um, they're certainly, of course, on the bus, although they're masked. Students have already really been um, uh, close together, and the cafeteria has been no exception. This now just makes it... Uh, more normalized uh, the, the school experience for students and have that opportunity for, for talking to one another and socializing and doing all the things that we know are important and, and that we're going to support. Um, I appreciate hearing that we're really going to try to support students and staff, by the way, in their choices mm -hmm. because there are some staff members who have vulnerable uh, family members mm -hmm. um, and some may choose to continue to mask, uh, although that may change as the spring goes on. Um, Karen, I know that one of the things that you've been very much involved in is a uh, developing and providing some clinics at mm -hmm. uh, the Elliott School. So when's the next one? What, what are we trying to do here? Yes, yeah, so vaccine um, clinics. I yes, we have a. So we were very, very fortunate to be able to partner uh, with PalMeds um, last week. Uh, we were, we did have a vaccine clinic at Elliott School, and it was actually available for all anybody, all eligible adults, children to come get their boosters or any of their vaccinations, and it was incredibly successful. And we had a lot of people come, which was wonderful. Um, and so we're going to have a follow-up clinic on March 10th from three to seven. There is no um, pre-registration required, no identification required. You just show up, let them know which vaccine you're due or which vaccine you'd like, because there's actually a choice, and then you get vaccinated. And it is a very child-friendly environment, so I'm there, um, the assistant principal's there, so we can help keep kids quiet, keep them distracted. I've got a movie playing in the background. So I think, as a mom, I would have really enjoyed having my child go to that kind of vaccine yeah. clinic, but everybody in the community is welcomed, and the staff as well. That's great. Well, we're fortunate that we have in our community overall a very high vaccination rate among our students and staff, and yet there's still some um, who have been waiting. And uh, so anyone can show up on March 7th at John Elliott School. March 10th. March 10th. Yes. I'm sorry. March 10th. <laughs> yes. We'll get that date right. March 10th uh, between 3 and 7. Three walk and seven. in to, to, get your, uh, to get your vaccine. I think mm -hmm. that's great. Well, you know, you said this, we're, we're almost two years into this, and what I'm proud of is that we've been able to keep schools open. It's been imperfect, it's been imprecise, and in some days it's felt impossible. And we've kept schools open, in large part due to your leadership, mm -hmm. to the hard work of our teachers, our nurses, who are all heroes now, really, mm -hmm. and our families and our students, of course, who've really been patient with us and worked with us um, and our students who are obviously are just uh, working so hard to learn. Mm -hmm. And now as we, as we move forward, we're, we're creating the conditions for a learning environment that's mask friendly, where we're going to honor personal choice um, and, and continue to, to move forward.
All right, well, I look forward to hearing how it's going. Thank you, Karen Bourne. Thanks, Sandy Garlic. Thank you so much.